Hello everyone, my name is Frank Van Brunschot. Uh, in my business I um, do a lot of uh, polishing and traditional cabinet making techniques and I like to encourage people to have a go at, um, at polishing. Shellac's a um, incredibly versatile material to use and with a little bit of patience um, people can get a remarkable finish. Alright, first I'd like to show you um, how you fold the rubber for French polishing. It's important to know how to fold the rubber correctly so the cloth is nice and tight over the wadding. We start with a, a piece of cloth about 6 to 8 inches square and you've got the wadding. What I do is I, I take the, cover, the cloth cover and I place the wadding diagonally in the center as you can see there. Once it's diagonally in the center I take these two opposite corners, pull them up together, make sure they're firm so the cloth is tight over the bottom of the rubber. You pinch these two pieces together with your thumb and forefinger of your left hand. Then you need to fold the front of the rubber. I do that by pulling it in this way holding it with my finger, then twisting these two pieces in and twisting it like so. Holding it, with my other, holding it tightly with my other hand as I go. Once you've got that nice and firm across there, you can transfer it into your other hand like so and then we have to tie up the back of the rubber. That's simply done by twisting it one or two times, then pulling that last piece back across the top. That way the face of the rubber is tightly covered and you've got no loose bits of cloth getting in the way when you're polishing. Now that you've got the cloth covered, it's time to start the filling process or the, the grinding or filling process, which I'd like to show you now. Okay, what we're doing now is using the pumice to very lightly sprinkle. At the start of the filling stage, you'd probably use a heavier coat of pumice, but the grain on this panel is starting to fill slightly. So I'm only putting the tiniest amount on. Now I'll come across it with a rubber with just metho in it. <coughs> and um, going in tight circles, I'm using um, a combination of the pressure and the cutting action of the pumice to force a combination of shellac and pumice into the pores of the timber, which eventually fill their grain. It takes quite a while, and um, that's what gives you the full gloss finish. I mean, it's quite all right to have an open finish, but to get that full gloss French polish finish, you really need to, um, to completely fill the grain and the beauty of the pumice is it turns translucent which gives you a very natural finish and by the time you finish the embodying stage it has nice depth and it's a very clear and natural finish. Um, we're at stage two now which is the next stage after the um, grinding or filling stage now that I've filled all the pores with a mixture of pumice and shellac, I want to build a body on top of the, the timber, which gives you the depth, uh, which gives you the depth in the finish. This is where I start to use a little bit of oil. Now the oil isn't actually a constituent as such, it's more an aid. It just lubricates the surface because at this stage the top of the board is completely flat because we fill the rubber and you get quite a lot of friction between the face of the rubber and the surface of the timber and the oil just helps that slide. This is the bodying stage. I start in a similar way to the grinding stage which is basically circles and I'll keep doing circles for quite a while and what I'm looking at doing is not so much you know one coat, two coats, three coats, but I'm looking for a build. And what that is is basically a film of polish building up on top of the 
the surface which is already being filled with the pumice and the shellac. It's always a good idea when you're using your circles to change directions of the circles. If you keep mixing them up, you, you're less likely to get a defined pattern of circles throughout the whole surface. So basically the bodying stage is building up a film. Now towards the end, towards the middle to the end of the bodying stage, when you're getting happy with the amount of polish on the surface, you'll change directions with the rubber. The whole idea of this stage is to take the tight circles gradually stretching them out to longer and longer oval straight oval passes so the whole point of this end of the bodying stage is stretching it out so when you look at the the surface you're not going to see any of those circular marks so it's mainly from tight circles to long ovals longer ovals figure of eights and then finally straight passes Um, what I guess I'd call the um, straightening or the finishing stage. We've got to the stage where we've, we've done our bodying and we've got a really nice build and we're getting that full body glossy surface. Now the finishing or the straightening stage, we still have oil on the surface and we just want to make sure we remove any residue of circles from the bodying and the grinding stage. Because if you look closely at different angles, you'll probably still see some of those tiny circles. Now in the straightening stage, I like to use a separate rubber that I keep um, clean and with just metal in it. I quite often put a new bit of linen on it too. Now the straightening stage, like I said, just metal in your rubber. We've got enough polish on the top. We're happy with the sheen. There's a nice build. So basically what we're going to do is start with just straight strokes. Now at this stage you can actually apply quite a lot of pressure. Some people will use two hands because you can get quite a lot of weight on that rubber. And what you've got to think you're doing is actually stretching out that finish. So the solvent in the rubber, with the aid of the oil which helps it move across the surface, the solvent is softening that finish and stretching it out. And we're trying to make sure we remove any circles and any marks that might be in there from the earlier stages which was the grinding process and the bodying process. Now as I said I like to use a separate rubber because we don't want to add any more polish and if you have a separate rubber you know that it's just got metal in it. And I also like to add a nice new clean cloth. Because at this stage I don't want to put any more oil on the surface, there's still a residue from the bodying stage and the idea of a, a fresh rubber just with metho and a fresh piece of cloth, that will help pick up any of the last oil. This is the stage where you actually can, can see how you're going and you can see if there's any circles left and sometimes you have to spend quite a while, it might be a good half hour of just straight strokes, straight up and down. And I usually find if you start with quite a bit of pressure, stretching out that finish, and as you're going, to, you, you can decrease the amount of pressure. To right at the end, you're using the rubber with a reasonable amount of metho in it, but very little pressure, just light passes. At the moment, because I'm applying a lot of pressure, I don't have too much metho in here. If I had a lot of metho in here, it'd start oozing out around the edges and making a mess. But the final, really, final passes that are a lot lighter, I have the rubber loaded up quite heavily with shellac. And the next stage after this is the burnishing stage, or you could, if you're happy with it, just leave it at that. But I like to burnish it, it just gets rid of any residual oil and it gives you a um, extra nice level of sheen. That's about it. Well thanks for watching everyone. I hope this short video has um, given you some good information in regards to French polishing. The main thing is to, um, to get out there and have a go at it. Um, experiment, try on a sample board and don't be afraid to 
wash it off and start again or cut it back with abrasives. It's an amazing process that can achieve an excellent result and well worth persevering with. Once again, thanks for listening.